And we are live with Cookbook yeah. Cafe. Woo! <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny when it's just the two of us trying to like go like, hey everyone, come to the party. <laughs> I'm used to like four co-hosts and, and a guest. And so there's, you know, I usually have the crazy people uh, keeping us company. But I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. The next episode of Cookbook Cafe Live, where we talk to one of our authors who produced a cookbook through Bakespace.com's new Cookbook Cafe platform that allows anyone to publish a cookbook as both an iPad app and an ebook for free. Uh, for more information, you can go to Bakespace.com and click on the Cookbook Cafe icon or menu bar item, or go to CookbookCafe.com. We're also on. YouTube at Bakespace TV. We're on uh, Twitter at Bakespace. If you have any questions for Danielle uh, Nichols, who is our, our resident cookbook author today, uh, please send us a message through Twitter. Uh, you can use the hashtag Cookbook Cafe, and we will find you and ask you a question, and we'll make sure that Danielle answers all of your questions. So, first of all, welcome Danielle to the program. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So, have you ever done a Google Hangout before? I haven't. It's my first time. So, are, are, are is this so far? It's okay. It's not scary. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when when did you join Bakespace? Do you remember what year it was? I think it made in 2000. Seven? Wow, wow. Yeah, I think so. It was after I saw something on Channel 5 Morning News. They, Kirk, the cyber guy, did this big thing about it and talked about international people all over the place. So it just attracted my attention, and there I went. <laughs> you were like, cupcakes, baking, cooking, <laughs> recipes. <laughs> Well, obviously you've seen how we've evolved from being a recipe swap to being a cookbook publisher as well. Um, and I know when, when we first started developing the platform, I went to you and you were part of like our, fi our first initial like beta users. And I was like, Danielle, please sign on, break this, and then please make a cookbook. So what, what inspired you to follow me on this journey? Were you like, but that's crazy? No, I thought it was really exciting, and you know the fact that I already had the recipes typed in there, it was just so easy. Just add the cookbook, add the cookbook, and it was done. You know, and then I just had to figure out what what I wanted as the opening, you know, like the cover page. But it was so easy, and it just took a couple minutes, and poof. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're working on another cookbook. What, what's what's the first cookbook's title, and then what's the the next cookbook you're working on? Um, the the current cookbook is Delightful Desserts. So it's just all focusing on desserts. The next one that I'm working on, I don't have a title for it, but it's going to be healthy recipes, maybe some gluten-free, some you know dairy-free, that's easy, um, different allergies, low sugar, that kind of thing. And it's going to be a fundraiser for the nonprofit that I work for. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Well, that's that's cool. I love I love when the cookbooks can do more, much more than just feed us. They feed our souls. They, you know, they they make us feel like we're doing something good by by making a donation to a worthy cause. Uh, we have a ton of uh, nonprofits who are using cookbooks uh, through our platform. So really excited about that. And I'm so happy that you know you made one cookbook and that you actually came back. <laughs> yeah. you, you never know. You never know. Um, and do I you still know? want to do that one for the college students, you know. But I'm trying to find recipes that don't require major equipment <laughs> that they're not going to have at their dorm. <laughs> you know, when I was in college, I think I had this thing, It was I went to Syracuse, and they had a thing called the Orange Card, which was um, where you could go down to the liquor store or the like the store within our dorm, and you could buy, you know, nuts and sh chips and stuff like that. And I remember my stepmother called me and she's like, what are sundries? <laughs> she's like, There's a thousand dollars of sundries on these. What did you buy? <laughs> <laughs> Sundries. Well, they are very good. <laughs> so that, that's how I fed myself through college. And I ate at the pizza um, truck, which was before pizza trucks were popular, um, wow. called Alibaba. So if anyone went to Syracuse... Alibaba yeah. with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> And they, they would deliver it too to our dorm room. It was really bad. So I think I think your next cookbook idea is it sounds like a delightful idea. You know, yeah. you may want to combine the two and do um, like gluten free for college kids. Yeah. Because a lot of those kids are they. I mean, they really probably have nothing. Um, if they go eat in the dorm uh, cafeteria, I can't imagine them to even be able to. They'd be like, nope, can't eat that. Can't eat that. Can't eat that. Can't eat that. Um, I feel so bad for them. <laughs> I know, I know. Aww. There's this one gal that my daughter went to school with. Um, she's out of college this year, but uh, she had contacted me several times to get my recipe for shepherd's pie, 
that was like her dorm favorite. Everybody would go to her place for shepherd's pie. <laughs> That is hysterical. We, I think we made some uh, cakes and mugs, too, okay. which was really fun. Now, I want to talk about the cookbook that you made. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's have Melody, who's our producer, let's have her go to the first screenshot, which is the one that you have. If you can do um, uh, the, uh, the, the share. Um, what, this first screenshot, and hopefully Melody is on the screenshot because our, our, our video looks different than, than, oh, okay. than the audience. Oh, Melody's adding camera right now, so she's doing the camera app. Perfect. Um, so this is basically what the app looks like if you're in Cookbook Cafe, which you can get in the iTunes store for free. Um, and basically, it's it's like a giant cookbook library that it has mini apps within it. So every cookbook author creates a mini app within the app. And so this is kind of what it looks like when you're doing a search. And there's your cookbook at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, delightful well, desserts. Okay. So if if I just typed in like right on the pie, it says desserts and then I did a simple search, um, it came right up. So it came up with like, like our Driscoll's friends and uh, one of our other food bloggers teamed up with KitchenAid and she did a cookbook. Um, and we have a few more on there and you can see that one is 99 cents. Um, but it's fun. What I like about our platform is that um, we have a proprietary indexing system, so if somebody is searching for eggs, it doesn't just, you know, it, do, it doesn't just make the popular cookbooks come up. It actually makes people who have recipes that are what you're looking for come up. So it's contextual uh, uh, search, which is a lot better than a lot of the other, like, you know, cookbook platforms that you find. Um, so we're really happy about that. Um, so do you want to go to the next slide, Melody? Because I want to start talking about your recipes. <laughs> Hello, Melody. Oh, she said she is. Are you are you able to get it? Hold on one second. I think you just t you just click on the arrow at the bottom of the screen. So what what made you Danielle name it um, delightful desserts? Why why is it, why was it delightful? Well, desserts are like the best part of any meal. <laughs> if I could just eat desserts, I would. Um, you know, and I just put in the ones that I like, the ones that just, you know, make my mouth, you know. It's, everything's tasty and, you know, delightful desserts just kind of flow together. And um, that's how it came up, I guess. What made you pick the, the cover? What made you pick the cover art? Because I know I know it's one of your recipes, but at the same time, uh, you know, with all the recipes that you have, how many? I think it's a, like twelve recipes in the cookbook, or how many recipes? Something like that. I don't remember exactly how many, but um, that recipe is kind of special to me. Um, after my grandmother had passed away, my cousin who lives in Alabama with her, with her, you know, lives back there. Um, she did a lot of cooking and baking with my grandmother, which I didn't get to do, being that she lived so far away. So I asked her to share recipes of grandmother's. Um, to, with me, and one of them was her strawberry cake. So when I did the um, cupcake camp with you a couple years back, that was the first time I had made the strawberry cake, but I made them into cupcake version. So I call them LB's Berry Delight, and um, my grandmother's name is LB. Um, so, anyways, because it just was the picture came out good, the picture, you know, the recipe is special to me. Um, so I just decided it would be a catch a little nice cover shot. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. It's very cute. I don't know if Melody realizes that her, her camera is on. <laughs> her screen. Her? <laughs> you should at least say yeah. hi, Melody. Can you wave? Oh, no. <laughs> oh she's evil. She's evil. Um, so uh, I know that um, you know you have a Julia Child recipe in the cookbook, and we'll we'll bring it up once we once we come up on the screen um, with Melody. Um, what was the inspiration? Like, do you do do a lot of your recipes come from um, like a classic recipe that you've altered and changed and made your own, or do you do a lot of recipe testing yourself? Um, I'll usually take an, an existing recipe and just, you know, if I don't like a rest, an ingredient, I'll swap it out with something that's comparable, or um, maybe I want to change the whole thing. So if it's like an Italian recipe, but I want to make it Mexican, I'll just take the Mexican version of that ingredient <laughs> and kind of, you know, go that way. and. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. 
<laughs> well, we'll we'll talk about a few. We'll, uh, I think you had one that you that didn't work, and that it actually evolved into another recipe. But yes. I see that Melody has the screen up right now. So if we can, if Melody can put the cameraman back on, and we can go to the main screenshot of what your cookbook looks like inside the app. Um, this is actually one of the recipes. This is the recipe that's on the cover. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully, Melody is uh, still with cameraman. And um, I love the little, uh, are those hearts, the little they're sprinkles? Little, they're little candy hearts. I found them in a baking shop in the valley. That's very cute. Yeah. That's so sweet. So, Melody, do you want to go to the next one? Because we just talked about this recipe. Okay. Oh, nope. That's Douglas's. Okay, here oh, we go. Okay. So, one of the themes that we have for this show is, uh, or, or is um, holiday recipes. Now, I noticed that this is a pumpkin cheesecake. It is and awesome. You, you usually don't see you, see, you see like pumpkin pie. There's like two schools of people who are like, I like pumpkin pie, I like cheesecake. But I love how you combined them because I, I like the texture of cheesecake better yes. than pumpkin pie. Yes. So, what, what makes this recipe truly unique? Um. <sighs> It, it has, the, like you said, the, the cheesecake texture. I'm not a pumpkin pie fan, so I'm not yep. even sure why I made it to begin with. Um, it was shared with me from somebody, I think it was in a newspaper of Sacramento, and they gave me the recipe. Um, one tricky part about this recipe is that you have to make it the day before, because if you eat it, even if you chill it for a few hours, if you eat it the same day, it just tastes like pumpkin pie. So you need to get that set firmness of the cheesecake and then the pumpkin flavor is a little bit muted because of all the nice good cream cheese that's in there. And actually this year I made that recipe into little cupcake versions. Oh, cute. It was perfect for sharing, so I didn't have to eat the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Now, when, when, you're, when you're doing something like that, how, is there anything that you have to consider when breaking it down into like a cupcake or a little like mini pie version? Is there anything, yeah. or is it just you put... I mean, I, I, everything is the same as far as the ingredients, but then I didn't know if the temperature would have to alter or the cooking time, so I really had to ch keep checking back to check to see if it was done. I didn't want to burn it and, you know, that kind of thing. So the cooking time was cut down quite a bit, um, which was also a nice thing because I'm not spending, you know, two hours in the kitchen waiting for it to be done. <laughs> and then the, because they're smaller, there wasn't that chance of getting the big crater that you end up with cheesecake sometimes down the center. <laughs> oh, interesting. Hey, how do you, how do you, like if somebody has, who's watching right now and has a cheesecake that does crack, I mean, I, I personally find that's kind of charming because it's like, it reminds me that it was like homemade or right. um, that, that someone actually made it or it was baked. Um, any advice for, someone recently emailed me about that. They said advice for um, my cat is making some noise here. Um, <laughs> they, they emailed me for some advice for doing uh, cheesecakes. So do you have any advice for how to prevent that from cracking? What I do is I'll put um, a cooling rack on a baking sheet and then I put the cheesecake on top of that and I put water in the bottom, not to touch the bottom of the springform pan because you don't want it to get gooey, but that creates a humidity inside the oven while it's baking so it really helps prevent the crack and of course then if you end up with one anyways you just put make a filling you know nice little topping to go over it's you know cherries or strawberries or something <laughs> <laughs> I think someone discussed that in the forums one day on bake space someone was like oh you just cover it with the filling <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like genius genius right um, Okay, now now we're at now if if, um, um, if Melody can uh, show this image of this recipe, this is by far my favorite. I think this is a perfect holiday recipe because it's so unique. By far my favorite cheesecake ever in the history of cheesecake <laughs> eating. My years of experience of eating sweets and cheesecake. This is by far my favorite recipe ever. It is a wonderful recipe. Can, can you tell me how you came up with it and, and what's what's the magic that I love so much? You know, I think um, it has a lot of cream cheese. It has, uh, I, I think it's like a New York style. I got it from a friend from New Jersey. Um, and it has that topping on top, the sour cream topping on top of it that you bake for a few minutes after the cheesecake is done. And then, of course, I've got the uh, pomegranate on top of that from when I had a pomegranate party that was hosted by Palm Wonderful, um, and it has a little bit of uh, Cointreau inside that topping. <laughs> you know, i got to tell you, 
going to your to your dinner that night because you it was so sweet. And our audience doesn't know this. Danielle has been a Big Space member since two thousand seven, and we actually live like I live on one side of the hill. She lives on the other side of the hill in Los Angeles, <laughs> and we didn't even really know that. And then all of a sudden, she's like, "I have this palm dinner. I'm 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 hosting. Would you like to come?" And I'm like, "Of course, I'd like to come." That's where I tried this cupcake, uh, this cheesecake recipe, so I can. 100% guarantee you, you will never find a cheesecake recipe more delicious. But also what I'm thankful for is going to that dinner showed me how to open a pomegranate for the first oh, yeah. time. <laughs> it's so easy. It I mean, is. It's no mess, nothing. Of course, I, I don't know how many drinks I had that night, and I still did it. <laughs> no, it was incredible. Do you want to tell folks how they can do that? Or how they can, no, how they can quickly? So I think after you cut it, Oh, I'm trying to remember how to do it. It's been a little while. But you have a bowl of water, and you um, empty the the I don't know what the little white pith stuff is inside, and you empty all of that into the water, and the seeds will sink to the bottom. They're called arils, and the white stuff kind of floats on top, and you kind of strain that out, and then you've got a whole pile of pomegranate seeds without having to pick them out one at a time. And I think maybe I cut it into quarters and just kind of, you know, pulled it inside out into the water and they just kind of fell in there and it's just so much nicer. Of course, as a kid, it's so much fun just to make that mess and eat them one at a time. <laughs> I just muted my mic because I was trying to. I realized I didn't have my chat up, so I'm not. I'm, I got to make sure I follow the conversation that's happening as well on oh. Twitter. Um, but I, I, you know, I got to tell you, I was I was so impressed with um, just the ease of being able to open the pomegranate that that it has stayed with me. I told my mom recently. I told my dad. My dad has a pomegranate tree, oh. and so I get like. He gives me like two bags full, right? And I know how expensive those things are. They're like four dollars per item, and I, you know, he's like, here, take my, you know, my dad's Albanian, so he has like this crazy kind of weird personality where he's like, Babette, Babette, well, take my pomegranates, and I'm like, he's like, and then he, he was, he was actually opening them. I walked into his house. He's opening them and just like they're popping everywhere, and I'm oh, like, gosh. Dad, 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 Dad. He owns a tree. He should know how. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, he owns a tree. He should exactly. I was like, I'm gonna save your life here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how you're gonna have the best pomegranate season ever in your life. Um, and then what I do is I open a whole bunch of them and I put them in a mm -hmm. freezer bag. They and I don't, freeze so wonderfully. You know, I actually don't, they don't last long enough to freeze because I eat them so much. Oh, well, when I had two, they sent me two cases of pomegranates and that was 44 pomegranates. And, they, and you know, Palm Wonderful has these huge, massive pomegranates. You go to another store and you've got these little tiny things, you go, you know, and then you see palms, pomegranates, they're like this, you know. So it was a lot of arrows in there. But they freeze. They freeze great. You know, I just, I for some reason, I just can never, um, I can never make them last. <laughs> I just like, I go there, I scoop. I'm like a, I'm like one of those, like a little pig in like a, um, a trough. A trough. You know? <laughs> like, like, like a little. Bag. I'm like, All right, bye. It's like the least graceful thing I eat. <laughs> yeah, that popcorn. <laughs> so let's. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm just like. Yeah, I'm just like I don't force know why. feeding yourself. Why would popcorn be a movie uh, thing to eat at movies? Because a, it's loud. B, it's all it gets all over, and your hands are disgusting. Like you've just been out in public, and now you're basically. It's that amazing greasy fake butter that they put on. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, can't get anywhere else. <laughs> you know that's true because you would never buy that if you saw oh, the. No. I Because I, I think it's like butter, and I don't know what else is probably in there, but probably some crazy stuff. Okay. <laughs> Um, so let's go to let's go to the next picture. So now this is if Melody can do the um, cameraman again. This is what the app looks like in the index view. So you know we have the view, which I think we'll we'll see one of the images. What I love about this view is that you can quickly scroll down the entire cookbook and read a little bit. Like you you read all the backstories. So you read about you know. You know, my aunt did this, my uncle did this, and you can kind of get a real sense of what what the actual cookbook is about. And then I love that we have the social media links. So you have your Bake Space account; it clicks to all your recipes. You have your uh, you have your own personal website, which is the little house. Then you have your Twitter account and your Facebook account. And now these open up 
your these open up the pages inside the app so that you don't have to like if you're cooking something here someone can find you on Twitter and they can say hey Danielle like wh what do I do ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> which, <laughs> exactly so I think a lot of people are making free cookbooks just to grow their fan base which is really fun so right. I don't know if, if you have even paid attention to this but have you noticed anyone um, you know joining you or coming from um, Facebook or Twitter that came through the app, or I, you may not know this answer. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't. Know oh, okay. Where it came from. <laughs> that's that's okay. <laughs> hey, that's an honest answer. That's a very yeah, honest I mean, answer. You know, they show up. I'm happy to see them, and I'll answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about you. Um, okay, and this is this is the cookbook cover. So this is basically the same thing where there's the, your social links, you have your reviews. If you click on like the little, you, uh, yeah, there's a couple of reviews. Okay. Love your recipes. I'm in LA. Blah, blah. And sometimes if it says anonymous, that means it's um, somebody in the app who has posted okay. a review that they haven't registered for an account yet because we okay. allow them to have. Um, there, we allow them to use the app on its own. Uh, Apple makes it so you can't force people to register, right. and that's just like their rules. So we do whatever Apple says. Um, but if you click on your, you won't be able to click on it, Melody. But if if someone were to be in the app and they click on the um, the author little profile link there, it would then take you to all your cookbooks that you've produced. So okay, right. imagine, you know, as you start to grow, and it's almost like people subscribing to your cookbook feed, as you start to grow and you start to make other cookbooks, you know, I always tell people make one free cookbook because people mm -hmm. will download it, and then you get into their stream, you get into right. their saved recipes, and then they'll be like, oh, I wonder what Danielle's making this time, and they'll be like, whoa, she has a, you know, a cookie recipe, she has this cookbook. Um, and it's kind of like you get more bees with honey, you know. Like right. it's, it's a free thing; people will download it. And you can, you know, sometimes people don't realize that you can make a cookbook with like six recipes and give it for free. You're just doing it as like here's a sample. Um, I also tell people who are actually coming out with cookbooks that are printed cookbooks that this is a great way within that two years of actually producing a cookbook. Mm -hmm. is that you how have to figure. That's how long it takes. Yeah, that's how long it takes to produce a cookbook. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely insane. By then, the trend is gone. <laughs> you know, it's it's you, well, that's that's one thing too. They do do a lot of trend stuff. Where I, I, if you notice, like a whole bunch of um, like all of a sudden at once, uh, there'll be you know cooking with tea. There'll be uh, chocolate uh, cake balls or whatever it is. And there'll be like five books all the same. I think they get into a, a system where they try to figure out what's the next trend and then if they can produce a cookbook it really takes them two years I mean right. it's, it's insane but what cookbook publishers do is they require their authors to start building their fan bases during that time period because mm -hmm. once that cookbook goes out there they have to say Hey, how you know, want it? yeah. How many people will want it? And you got to do some of the marketing. You can't just right. let the, like the publishing house isn't going to be like, oh, let me, you know, I will do all your sales. No, <laughs> they're gonna. You get to use Random House's name. You get to use all these great publishers' names, but you still got to go out and sell that thing. Right. So what we say to a lot of our real authors, like the people who are um, who are established cookbook authors, who are kind of now trying to figure out if they should go digital, um, is we tell them do like a promo almost uh, you can even add you know a lot of people do like book videos where they're mm -hmm. like you know this is what's coming out and here's a video because our cookbooks have video and photos you can add that content to it oh, and right. say here's a here's a preview um, and you can make your um, Amazon like affiliate link you can replace like a social link with that so your Amazon page could pop up and then people would be like I'm gonna buy the full book yeah <laughs> you yeah know? So that's that's exciting for us. We're we're hoping that a lot of I mean we're still pretty new, but we're hoping that a lot of authors um, see the value in that because we would love to support them. And also, it's just such rich content that um, I think it's like a win-win situation. All of our users will love it. The authors will you know we appreciate um, their content, and um, also we're just we're ex excited to help them when the actual if their cookbook does come out. Yeah, right. Well, I know that Hi Hi Hyperion I think is one of the publishers. And they'll have they'll send uh, several people a free copy of a cookbook that's going to come out in a month, and then yeah. we you know bake a couple of things from it, blog about it, and promote it, and that kind of thing. It'd be good like to kind of set something up with Hyperion to you know get you in contact with uh, the authors. No, exactly, because we're not trying to replace like this is not. 
we're not trying to be like, oh, cookbooks are dead. I personally, I, I am one of those people who love to like open a book and yes. just kind of be aspirational and like be in my fantasy island and be like, I'm going to make this one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I have like all these little post-its and I'm like, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, but I, I think because it's so pricey for just anyone who has like, you know, some great recipes, if for them to go through that process of publishing, it's just mm -hmm. so costly, like with time and money and energy that, you know, together maybe as a community, we're much stronger as a whole than each individual author trying to sell their cookbooks. Um, this this is a built-in platform for that. So we're super excited. But I want to look at this is what your this is what you know how I showed you the index view of your um of your cookbook. And I forgot too, since you don't have an iPad, I don't you're, so you're I seeing this for the first it. time. <laughs> I'm I've so never clear. played with my cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> See? And that's proof you don't have to have an iPad to use the service. Right. Um, it's not like an infomercial though. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I promise it's not a paid advertising. No. Um, so this is what your um and if, if this were if this were the live app right now, if you were to touch on any of the white boxes, they would disappear. And it, the name of the recipe, or the name of the yeah, the name of the recipe would go away, and you would actually see the recipe before it would actually click to that recipe. And then the first one, because I already downloaded your cookbook when I did this, there's usually something on the first recipe that says sample recipe. So everyone gets to test and see one recipe from every cookbook. So before you actually like buy something or even download a free cookbook oh, you can kind of get an idea yeah I mean have you ever bought a cookbook and like not opened it? Uh, no, but I brought <laughs> it home and realized that what I opened and saw was the only thing I liked in it. <laughs> oh, that's the <laughs> No, that is being sarcastic. I can't tell you how many cookbooks I have purchased for, for like one recipe. Right. Or I've ever just made one recipe in it. Yeah, I've got a whole stack. <laughs> so, so you're basically saying I'm not alone. No, also, you're not alone. Did you make yourself a drink? No, I didn't. I'm going to make a margarita. Oh, can you you want to make it right now? I can make it right now. You want to tell us what the recipe is? <laughs> yes. Um, actually, my sister in Alabama gave me this recipe. So sometimes I call it a redneck margarita, but it's actually more popularly known as a beer margarita. It's really easy. It's equal amounts of everything. There's four ingredients. It's beer, tequila, uh, Sprite, and limeade. So I just do like the 12 ounces. So I've got my limeade. <laughs> and then I use this to measure my Sprite. <laughs> Unless you have like a 12 ounce bottle of Sprite, but everything now is like 16 ounce in weird sizes. Um, I hope I don't spill on my computer. Hey, while you're pouring that, I just want to say I want to give a shout out on Twitter. We have some people watching right now. Um, we have at La Cuisine Helene. Is, she just said she just downloaded the app. She said, thank you so much, Crystal Cafe. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Uh, we have Douglas Welch, who is at Douglas Welch. He's also he's a co-host on Kitchen Party that's going to uh, air tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're talking cookie recipes. Be there. Um, and Douglas says, funny about altering recipes to use different cultural ingredients. I am making wonton wrapper taco cups <laughs> as I watch. <laughs> well, I did something with wonton wrappers, and but then I made guacamole, but I used all the ingredients that you would put in a wonton, like the, the, uh, the, the bean sprouts and the soy sauce and whatever, with the guacamole and used the wonton wrapper cups the vessel and they were so good. You know, I used with wontons, we did, we did a thing with Sabra hummus where I had wonton wrappers and I put hummus in the middle of them and then I baked them. Oh. And they were so good. I mean, they were, they were e easy to make. They were super, like, fun. They were adorable on the plate and they tasted absolutely delicious. The only thing that was bad, though, is that if you waited, like, an hour or two hours, um, they didn't taste as, they, they, they weren't, um, they didn't last, they didn't survive. So the, yeah. the key is when you eat make them fast. Yeah, eat them fast. Or, or you know, they, they, you know, they actually, they were okay. You know what, oh, I know what it was, is we were, we were doing some, um, I was, we were shooting some video of me cooking them. 
And then I had made some the night before, thinking that I could, you know, like, you know how you do the cheating thing when you're shooting for a camera, and right. you basically, like, you make them in advance, and then you're like, here's what we're going to do. And I thought, oh, I'll speed up the production, because I worked in television for 12 years before um, going to uh, running Bakespace.com. And I was like, oh, I'll do them the night before, and then they'll look great and whatever. And I got them that next morning, and I was like, oh, these do not look good. So... I think they actually survive like a couple of hours, but they don't look good the next day. Definitely, <laughs> you don't you don't want to save them. Um, don't save them. And then and then uh, let's see where else are we at? Um, and then uh, Helene says, "Funny, I buy many cookbooks for one recipe, or I just read them." That's so true. <laughs> I, you are in such well, good company. Well, they're inspirational, though. I mean, you know, you get a cookbook that inspires you, and you may not cook something from it, but you end up in the kitchen. You know, I I absolutely agree. And wh when you when you look at a cookbook, um, do you? And this is for our audience as well. Do you base your purchase on photos? Like, would you would you buy a cookbook because the pretty photos? Or would you buy a cookbook because something says like these are from like my great aunt and these have been passed down to my? I mean, is the story behind the recipe as important as the the picture? Basically, the picture. You know what? I buy, you eat with your eyes. Um, it's hard for me to, to buy a cookbook. Like, I love Julia Childs. Um, I love her cookbook. It kills me that there's, I can't look at them. <laughs> so I make it. It's like, oh, is that what it's supposed to look like? <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, we didn't get, oh, you know what I realized? Oh, I, I realized I have, you know, Kathy, who is at Dutch Baker Girl, she's also watching. She said, great margarita recipe. And uh, I didn't realize I didn't have all on my Twitter feed. I just oh, had I top. Yes, yes, yes. So did you, did you, um, where are we at with the recipe? Did you finish mixing all the stuff? I did. And then I just did garnished you? it. I got my, my salt and then put a couple of uh, a little wedge of lime and lemon and orange. And that sounds that's good. It. And it, it kicks your butt. <laughs> you know, I can <laughs> I cannot for the life of me. Have salt around my margaritas. You know what? Once Am I, I take the first two, no. Once I take the first couple of sips, I stay in that spot where the salt's gone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, I'm that jerk who, like, when they, when it shows up at my table, I'm like, ooh, is there any way possible I can get another one? I always order with salt. I mean, I don't know if it's because I feel like I need to do that because it's supposed to be, but then I don't do anything with the salt. <laughs> no, no, no. Ask them to keep keep it off. Keep it off. <laughs> but sometimes, like if you go some places and, and they're really tart, you know, and the salt I throw it in there because it just kind of softens it up a little bit. Oh, maybe if you mix it. I see. I'm. I don't like salt in anything. Like I don't. I don't add salt to any food. I don't, um, if, if soup is, the flavor, even a little bit. you know, if soup is too salty, I cannot eat it oh, to yeah. save my life. I mean, it just, like I wake up and I look like, I'm, I'm going to say this, if my mother's watching, it's going to be bad. <laughs> 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 I look like my mother. I wake up and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh, so it makes you bloat or something. Just retain water. It just makes yeah, you yeah. retain water. We'll say it that way. Well, me. I just, <laughs> Melody's like, hello. Uh -huh, okay, so here we are. Okay, almond butter pudding cups. Now, oh, what gosh. is the story behind those? That was a, a contest entry for Archway Cookies, and they sent me a crap load of cookies. So I ground up the cookies to make the crust. And I was going to do peanut butter, but then when I was at the um, Trader Joe's, I saw almond butter, and I'd never tried it before. So instead of doing a peanut butter pudding, I did an almond butter pudding, and I lined um, the cookie crumb crust with chocolate and then, so that the, the uh, pudding wouldn't dog out the crust, and that's how that came out. Hey, Melody, I don't know if, if you're, I think you are showing it full shot. I'm not seeing it, but if you are showing it, um, it's a cute picture. It's a very cute picture. I like, what What are the things in front of it? And do you do a lot of, um, when you do your food photography, do you use a lot of props on your pictures? I'm awful at um, styling <laughs> my pictures. I just never, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyways, for this one, because it was for a contest, um, I went outside. I have... Um, I don't know, a hot plate type little thing 
cast iron, so I put it up to kind of raise it off the table, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I just sprinkled almonds around it, because that's what it is, and I think it's got ivy in the background, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know, that's so funny, I thought those were um, marbles. No, they're I ivy, thought... I mean, um, almonds. I, I didn't even realize that. That looks. Oh, now I, I I get it now. I was thinking it was. Um, I was thinking. You know how like you have a fountain where you have like rocks around. Oh, right. I was thinking it was kind of like a like a mystique. Um, Thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like like I'm in the garden and I'm eating my my uh, my pudding cup. <laughs> I love now, my marbles. And this is interesting. I mean, I like the idea when you because I I know a few times you've like been given product and stuff like that and you have to think of recipes. What um, what's the first thing you do when you start recipe testing or when you start thinking of new ideas? Oh gosh, you know what? I have to find something that's going to inspire me. Um, I go with you know, depending on if I'm getting several samples, I'll pick the one that's more appealing to me flavor-wise. Um, I think I, I think these will make with the oatmeal cookies, and I love oatmeal cookies. So you know it just I have to really think about it and I frustrate myself over it <laughs> for a couple of days trying to think of something and you know original and you know I know that the other people out there go through this too you know you google it and then you realize that someone else already thought of it and you're, you know um, so I just I'll find a recipe maybe of something that I'm going towards to see if it'll work if I you know I don't have to work out the kinks um, and then just kind of go with that and just alter my ingredients to what I'm going for. Awesome. Hey, your audio keeps cutting out a little bit, like it goes lower than higher. So I don't know if you're leaning against your mic. No, I think it's up here. Oh, okay. hello? I don't know. Hello, can okay. you hear me? I can, I can hear you now. But you want okay. you Perfect. Okay, now it's perfect. I also want to put out a call out on Twitter. Uh, let's see, uh, Helene, La Cuisine Helene on Twitter says, she's talking to Douglas and she says, having, uh, love having them from the library also, she's talking about cookbooks, been right. lucky recently at Value Village for gently used cookbooks under four bucks. Nice. That's pretty good. That's, yeah. I love that we have this thing, have you been to that, um, were you the one who invited me to the cook, like the antique cookbook place, it's in Hollywood, it's like once no. a year. The, at the farmer's market on Selma, once right. a year. I love that farmer's yeah. market. And the problem is, I by the time I get up on the weekend, I'm like, I'm just like ready to roll out of bed, and then I, it's like one o'clock. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna get like the last. No, you have to get there like eight in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll they, keep so, trying. They do this there. They do. They have a um. They have a uh, cookbook. It's like a cookbook fair, and they oh, basically wow. have thousands of cookbooks. I'm, I, God, I really thought that you were the one who invited me, but I no, guess not. I wish I, I when wish I, when I hear about that, I will I will post that next time. You know, Kathy uh, at Dutch Baker Girl says, "I love collecting recipe books, but practically speaking, if I need a recipe, I look it up on the internet." Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Unless it's one that I know already from a cookbook that I've already tried. Or if I want to go vintage, I have a cookbook from the early 1900s that I'll play with. Now, how do you make sure your your mic is plugged in too? By the way, because it maybe that it got loose. Um, you know, how do you find when you have your cookbook collection up on the wall and there are all your books? How do you know which cookbook has the recipe you're looking for? What's your indexing system? In my head. Sometimes I have to go through five of them. That's not helpful. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't have an index system. I have um, behind me um, a, sh a shelf with cookbooks, and it's two layers deep. So I have my most favorite ones in the front, and, you know, it's that way, but... Interesting. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, that's that's one of the, way, the reasons why we love our platform is that if you remember either the title or an ingredient or a recipe name or even a username, like if you remember that stuff, any, any of those keywords, all you have to do is search for it and your any recipe that you saved in any of the cookbooks you've downloaded will automatically be indexed for you. So if I, I can I can look simultaneously in the storefront and I can find new cookbooks I want to buy but then I'm like oh I had a chocolate recipe I bought right. six months ago like where is that where is it I could just say I could type in chocolate and then in that same search I just click on the other tab that says my recipes 
and then all the chocolate ones or whatever the keyword that I'm looking right. for will, will pop up too. So, you know, this could solve your problem. Really <laughs> I just need an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, we'll, we'll have to Talk get you my one. Christmas list. <laughs> um, and then uh, we still got Douglas watching. Yay! Um, and then we're trying to make sure we follow um, the Twitter, the Twitter feed as well. I had uh, Google Plus has a new program where you can actually follow it within Google Plus, but for some reason the URL has cleared out, so I, I have to go back to our actual Twitter page as well. Um, but this is great. This is a great conversation that's happening. If you want to follow the conversation, uh, look at the hashtag Cookbook Cafe. Um, also fo uh, follow us on Twitter at Bakespace or send us a message afterwards. Um, Danielle, what is your Twitter handle? I'm stuffed. I'm stuffed. That's perfect. <laughs> That's your Bake Space <laughs> username too. That's good that it you keep is. the consistency. Yeah. Well, so what was the reason that you? Because you your blog is called Peaceful Cooking, but you, and it's like it evokes like you're you know you're with tea and you're sitting oh, there and no. you're having a relaxing time. But I'm stuffed is like, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, the the blog came about because of a, you know stressful situations and the kitchen is my escapism. So. I needed that to, you know, wherever the drama is, it's not in my kitchen unless I do it. <laughs> so that's kind of where I was going with that. How did you start your blog? Oh, gosh. Um, we did a uh, book reading club in Bake Space in the forums, and the first book that we read was the Julie and Julia project. So, um, and then there was a couple of other people that already had a blog, you know, Sprite with a... Uh, um, and then Michelle with her Italian cooking and, and all that stuff. So after reading that book, and it just so ins they had asked you know talked to me about doing a blog. I'm like right, whatever you know. Um, but after reading the book, it just really resonated with me. So you know January first, right after we finished the book, I started the blog, and then shortly after they came out with the movie and all that stuff. So that's where it came from. That's cool. Was it um, was it intimidating to like write your first blog post? Where oh you're gosh, like, yes. Hello, I didn't world. tell anybody. No, I didn't tell anybody. I wrote and did stuff or whatever, and I would Michelle and I would talk about it, and she would read it and give me some feedback. Um, I actually deleted some posts. <laughs> well, what what kind of posts? Well, I was starting to to get a little bit personal and um, venting some of my personal frustrations, and realized that wasn't the direction that I wanted to go. So keeping it, you know. Carefree and peaceful, <laughs> and uh, you know, basically what I did. Well, you know, I think I think that's a good lesson in. Um uh, less is more, and also, uh, does any good come from it? My boyfriend right. always says every time he he's like every time I'm on Twitter or something, I want to post. Um, in fact, there was a famous chef recently, and I felt so bad because I I thought I actually. I may have schooled him in how to tweet, and I mean this is like one of the most famous chefs ever. I won't even say his name. Oh man, <laughs> but I'll have to get it out for out of you the next he, time we go for cupcakes. <laughs> he had posted a political thing, and I was like, like no, it was like I think it was after the election too, and it was a political thing, and it was just like, regardless of what you're thinking, I'm like in your stream, that particular mm. stream. Your fans want to hear you talk about food. Right. You're somebody they look up to. You're somebody. So I had, I had sent him a tweet that was like, um, like that his 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 uh, <laughs> almost embarrassed to say that his Twitter feed jumped the shark, and I was like, oh no! I was like, stick to stick to cupcakes. Stick to. Oh, he's not in right, cupcakes, right. but stick to food. Stick to food. That's what your you know your community's here for. And it was like two o'clock in the morning, and I think it was just one of those days where I was like. I just had it. I was just like, I'm going to tell everyone what I think, you know? Yeah. And he got right back to me, and I was like, uh -oh, this, is not, <laughs> <laughs> this is not the way I wanted to get on his radar. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And then somebody jumped in and was like, I hate when people can't speak their mind, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God, this is, this is going to backfire on me. You know, so, if it's a personal, per you, know, yeah. you know what, I, people... You don't need to put your laundry out there, you know. But there are some people who they maybe have that need or whatever. But I keep that away from the social network because it's there, and it's going to stay there. So I try to keep things on the light side and incorporate the food in there. And do you have, do you ever Google yourself just to see what comes up? I do, and I think there's um, a model 
there's somebody out there with the same name over the pond. <laughs> You're, You're like, like, hey. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I don't know. I forget who it is. I don't know. That's funny. My boyfriend has a um, there's a famous musician musician that has his same name, uh -huh. and uh, Eric actually owns the domain, the full name. And the guy's been trying to get it for a very long time. And it was it's very funny because um, when somebody has your name and you're like competing for that Google presence, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can get kind of a little crazy. So every time a new platform opens, I'm always like, get that domain. <laughs> <laughs> And the poor, the poor guy, like, I don't think he has any of his, like, right real name. I mean, it's just, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's terrible. It's awful. I'm so bad. Um, the, there's still a conversation happening in the chat room. Um, oh, and then Douglas is like, never mind us. We're having our own discussion over here. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that's right. Hey, that's exactly what we're here for. We're here for not only for people to come and watch the show, but we're here for people who are into the same thing to find each other. Um, and Douglas is a, just a wealth of information. Kathy is just spectacular. Um, and then uh, Helene, La Cuisine Helene says, I wish I had an electronic searchable database for all my cookbooks. Hmm. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> hmm. We can make that happen. Um, and then where are we, where are we, where are we? And then also Helene says, I prefer, this is why I prefer Twitter over Facebook, which is true because Twitter, you can, you can go, you can have multiple conversations going, you can follow a conversation, you can jump into something, you can, you can watch um, by great <laughs> topics. And with Facebook, it's like everyone who is talking to you is somebody who you know. And yeah. Sometimes that's not good. <laughs> so anyway, anyways. So okay, let's go to the next. Um, there's a great recipe here. It's called, um, and I hopefully Melody has the cameraman on again. It's called eggnog kringla. Mm -hmm. What is that? It's a cookie. Um, I think it's a Norwegian background. We this is again linked to bake space. We were doing. Um, a challenge and we used to do these challenges every month and it was to um, do something that was uh, like a tradition holiday baking tradition and my family when I was little we're not bakers my mom was an is, is an amazing cook but she doesn't do the cookies and cakes cupcakes and all that kind of thing so I was looking I'm part Norwegian so I was looking for something that I could call tradition and have it linked to something in my heritage and uh, so I found that recipe on the internet and made them, and I have made them every year since then. It makes a huge batch of them. They're not too sweet. They've got that eggnog flavor, but not intense. Um, I have, one of my daughters doesn't like eggnog, but she loves this cookie. You know, I just, um, <clears throat> speaking of eggnog, <laughs> why, why are all my shows about alcohol? I really should be, like, sponsored by, like, the Smirnoff group. Um, there is a there's an eggnog that I think is like I don't know I don't know what they all call Jim Bean something or Jack Daniels I think it's Jack Daniels there's an eggnog that we just recently tried and it has like a Jack Daniels flavor but since it was in the grocery store and we didn't have to use an ID I have a feeling it's only the flavoring it's actually not non-alcoholic because they didn't think you were under 21. Oh no, that was, <laughs> that's, always, that's always the worst thing when you go to like somewhere and they don't card you and yeah, you're like, I, thank I, you for nothing. Yeah, really. You know, it's like, humor me, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I know I look old. But I, I think the know. last time someone carded me at the grocery store, my husband's like, well, he's probably trying to pick up on you. <laughs> it was a lady, okay? <laughs> oh, you're like, hey. Um, Come on, give me something. You know, well, we added, we added rum to it because I was like, that's it. And of course, I added a little too much rum. <laughs> like, it was is there such a thing? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So what we did was we, um, a cool combination is if you take a little milk and then add a little eggnog to kind of thin it out a bit, oh. and the alcohol seems to work better too for some reason than when you add a little bit more. Um, in fact, that's what I'm drinking. Just to well, kind of thin it out a little bit because the eggnog is so thick. Exactly, and if you don't like the texture of eggnog, but you like the flavor, it's a perfect way to do it. We just this is this is a weird combination. This is really going to be this is going to sound disgusting. No, this no. is milk, um, uh, mint creamer, like only like a splash, and rum, and nice. it is it is delicious. It's almost like a um, a mint eggnog 
that I think if you use a little bit of the flavored creamers, you can basically customize like your eggnog. Have an eggnog bar. Right. Hey. There you, go. you can have an eggnog cookbook. You, oh, you know, I just you saw. Who was cheesecake? it? What? Eggnog cheesecake. You know, actually, I saw I saw Cooking Channel on Google Plus had posted, and I'm sure it's on the Cooking Channel somewhere on their website, but it was like 16. I don't know if it was 16. It was like a number, like 18 things to do with eggnog. But they were all like different, like popsicles okay. and like really weird, unique things. And I was like, oh, my God, this would be a great cookbook. I was thinking of reaching out to them and being like, Hello. cooking channel, let's, let's make this happen. We got, we got some great stuff for you here. Um, uh, we still got we still got Kathy. We still got the group in the chat room. They're 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 on their own oh, now. <laughs> they're in their own party. They're not even watching anymore. <laughs> oh man, come on, you guys. <laughs> hey, tell us we're having a good time. Tell us what your Twitter handle is again, if someone has a question for you. I'm stuff. I am S T U F F E D. Awesome, and I'm at Bake Space. So if you guys have any questions, now here's here's another recipe. Here's the Julia Child's orange and almond sponge cake. Okay, now you made it cupcakes. Yeah, that was one of the things. Um, I don't know why I didn't make a big sponge cake. I just made the cupcakes. So I did some. I think I did something wrong with that recipe though, because the almonds kind of all it was powdered almonds, um, and they all sink to the bottom. It tasted good, but a lot of almonds at the bottom. But um, yeah, I was just asked yesterday. They were like, "Is there an easy Julia Child recipe that you can make?" Blah 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 blah. And I was like. Uh, it's called French cooking. It's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, right. So you know what? They're not that difficult. I mean, she does such a good job of explaining yeah, that's everything. True, that's true. So that's true. so time consuming. I that, mean, it took me hours to make these cupcakes, but they are so good. Hollandaise sauce. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> it takes forever. <laughs> Can you make beef bouillon or however you say it with beef uh, bouillon? Yeah, bouillon blah blah. Can you make that as um, sh as shish kebabs? I was like, yeah, but I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Get a stick. It's not really interesting. Um, I was like, why would you want to make it into a shish kebab? I mean, would you cook it and then just stick it on a stick? I mean, otherwise, it's not the bourguignon. I mean, you're not you cooking even wine. They were looking for something that was modern, something that's, um, oh, uh, Douglas is saying he's starting kitchen party early. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm sorry. Every time I hear kitchen party, I'm like, oh, oh we got a party. <laughs> um, uh, you know, they wanted something modern, and with today's cooks, it's like people want to spend less time in the kitchen, and they don't want to, they, they, they still love that tradition of hanging out in the kitchen and talking, but they, the time, it's like everyone's time with social media and work and picking up the kids and doing, yeah. you know, whatever it is they're going to do, um, following their dreams, you know, it's, it's, it's like you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm already behind schedule like an hour into your day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like 7 a.m. and you're like, I think but I'm the late. The sad thing is, I mean, yeah, you've got these recipes that take like 30 minutes and they taste good, but they don't have the depth. I mean, if you can spend four or five hours to make a meal, I mean, Thanksgiving, come on, you've got a depth of flavor going on that, in there. That's called a very good wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone who's obsessed with cooking. <laughs> Not what I am. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to the next. Let's see. Is there another uh, recipe, Melody? Melody. Oh, here. Tell me That's about these mess. spicy these spicy chai latte cakes or cupcakes. Tell me about that story. I was originally going to make a log um, where you, you have like your your cake or whatever, and you put the icing in the middle and you roll it up. Um, I want you the chai latte, so I got the mix. I have the chai latte mix from Trader Joe's, and so I, I'm trying to think how come I used a cake mix in a box. And put it in a jelly roll, thinking it would come out thin like I do with my pumpkin rolls. And it didn't. It puffed up, you know, about this thick. And you can't roll that. I was <laughs> 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 like, what am I going to do with this? So I ended up cutting them into the cookie cutters and putting the icing on it so I wouldn't waste it. And then from then on, I just made them into cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, Anything can be made into a cupcake. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. And I don't even like cupcakes. Really? <laughs> they're okay. Mm -hmm. Unless they're a special flavor, like the chai latte ones are really good. But in a, um, the grocery store, don't even bother. Oh, no. The grocery <laughs> store, the grocery store, there's something. It's like their frosting. Oh, I was having a, I was having a discussion with Waxy. someone. Where, 
we were walking down the street, and uh, I was walking my dog, and <clears throat> they were talking about cupcakes and where you find cupcakes and you get the grocery store, and I looked at them, and I was like, do you realize what's in that frosting? <laughs> I'm like, it's called lard. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> that should be in something else, not a cupcake. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, it's very, it's like, it's sturdy for a reason. Like it has, you know, it has, it has texture. It has, it has, it has feel. Um, so it is. Would you say that this is your favorite cupcake recipe? It's one of my favorites. That and the strawberry one. Um, this one has been uh, passed around at work. Uh, I've got girls at work that make it that love it and that kind of thing. So. It's definitely popular. Um, I made it for a charity event that we had at work um, and made them into little mini ones. And the one recipe made like 80 little mini cupcakes. Oh, wow. I love yeah. those mini cupcakes. We got to do Cupcake Camp LA again. Yes, yes. I've got uh, like things in my head going on, okay? I mean, you know. I get idea, contacted but... every week for someone who's like, when is Cupcake Camp LA coming back? When is Cupcake? And I'm like, I'm looking for a venue. I'm looking for a space. Um, and uh, my boyfriend's like, don't do it again. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it was a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah, but now we have the poster. Now we have, like, we have every... You have, we have the, the floor plan. I have a, like, five-foot pink cupcake pinata in my house. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's like this big, and I have been wondering what to do with it. <laughs> I'm almost thinking to like put it behind me in the show one time and just be like, "This is my piñata." Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have we have all this great stuff, and it was so much fun to like support the charities and and be yeah, part it was. of it. I community. mean, my girlfriend came and helped out, and she loved it, and she'll do it again. You know. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so we have. Like, I think I have 200 bakers signed up this time. Like, like, or yeah. like almost 300 bakers who are already ready to like move forward. Um, I'm one of them, right? You are, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Hey, Melody, that's you got to move forward on that page. That's that's we're talking about that tomorrow. That's 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 a preview till tomorrow's preview, episode. Yes. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. I think. Oh, I think that's oh, it. That I think it. we did. All. Oh, yay! Or I want to make sure them. we covered. Yeah. Now, now, what? Um, I, let me let me see. I think you have. Let me just check. I think. Did we say yesterday you had over eighteen hundred downloads? I think so. It was like 1,846 downloads. And did you know that um, uh, that the average ebook downloaded is like 100 downloads? That's it? 100? Yes. That's pretty cool. So you are doing uh -huh. great. <laughs> you are doing great. <laughs> Do you get the emails from us every time there's a download? Yes, and it's so exciting. It's like, oh, yay, another cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're trying to figure out how to make those um, emails better for our right. authors as well. So we're, we, we're, we're starting to test some stuff. We're getting some feedback from some of the authors to make it so that you can kind of see, not that you can see who buys it, but that you can have more information and, and make it more of a digest so that you're not being bombarded with, like, email after email no, like I kind of like the bombardment. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of brightens my day for a minute. <laughs> I love it because you know I have a cookbook up there too, and it's like I love it when it's like you just sold the cookbook. You just I sold mean, the come cookbook. on, if someone's selling like ten thousand cookbooks, they'll know. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That is actually that's that's actually a really good point. You know, I have one cookbook called um, "Get Baked with Bake Space" because it's <laughs> like, supposed to be kind of funny, you know. And it's like my favorite cupcake recipes that are in in the app, and um, it was just so funny because every time. It's like that one downloads more than any of the other ones I have. So I always think I'm like, what kind of people are we attracting? <laughs> Actually, we just we just had an author who I think we're gonna have come on to this show, um, who just did like four hemp cookbooks. Oh like my gosh! Hemp breakfast recipes, hemp lunch recipes, and it's it's really interesting. It's really neat. So I can't wait to. Um, We've had a whole bunch of cookbooks this week um, go in to, for Apple to be approved, so I'm really excited about a lot of paid stuff and then some free cookbooks as well. But it's fun. it's really fun. My favorite part is when I get an email from someone and they're like, I just found your site. I have some questions. And then I start finding out like how they found out about us and found out like what, what do they want to do. And it's like, you know, I, especially when it's like someone who runs a culinary department at like their junior high, you know, you, you yeah. get to this point where you're just like, oh my God, this is going to be so cool that these, you know, teenagers are going to be experiencing like their first sort of foray into culinary publishing like through us. And we'll it's, keep it's, the hemp cookbook away from them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I know. I'm hoping. I'm like, I wonder like if they have to be 20 or older or, or <laughs> yeah. have to have a card. <laughs> 
I know. I was thinking about that. I was like, this will be interesting because this is our first uh, cookbook like that. So it, we'll see if Apple has any problems. So far, Apple has had no problems with any of our cookbooks, oh, good. which is really exciting. Um, what's cool is that if it's a free cookbook, um, we don't have to get Apple's permission, so I can launch it into the App Store within like 24 hours, which right. is really cool. Um, or like, you know, Douglas just did a cookie cookbook for tomorrow's show, and we were able to launch it. Like, he wrote it, and like within like 20 minutes, like it was exactly. in the App Store. Now, once um, you've made the cookbook, if you go back and realize you made an error in an ingredient or measurement or whatever, can you fix that and it'll fix it on everybody's? Yeah, it'll fix it on everybody's, but what happens is that I have to do the change for you. So I can set it back to okay. edit. I can set it back to edit. We have no problem with doing that at all. Like if, if somebody calls up and says there's a typo or there's some problem or I forgot to add a recipe, we can we can edit that stuff. Um, we lock the cookbooks once they get purchased because it's not fair. Okay. Um, it's not fair for people. It's not fair if like you know, an author comes in, lets a whole bunch of people download it, and then they take all their recipes. And then this person, especially if they paid for it, the person's going to be like, where are my cookbooks? So we lock them. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't, like if you decide you want to you want to take the cookbook out of the indexing, whoever already bought it has it, but it just won't go into the main population. Um, and then when you upload recipes too, you can mark them private so that people will have to get the cookbook. They can't just get the recipes on Bakespace, which is which is a, a, I think a really cool thing. And my probably one of my favorite parts. I have two favorite parts of the platform. Um, one of my favorite parts is that you can once you once you create your account and you start uploading your recipes into the site, those recipes are like your your eternal archive. So say um, Christmas time, I want to do like 10 or 20 um, holiday cookie recipes. I just go in, I make a holiday cookie cookbook, I add my cookie recipes and I hit publish. But then like sometime later I'm like, I want to do a gluten free cookbook. But one of those cookies in my other cookbook are gluten free. Right. Since it's already into my archive, I can just now grab that cookbook. All the recipes stay in your like in your account. So people don't have to keep re-uploading things. They can sort of remix their cookbooks based on whatever is topical or, you know, whatever is sort right. of like the category. Um, this is also one one reason I also like it is that um, you you if you do a group cookbook and you give out the link to your friends and family or your community for them to upload a recipe those recipes go into your account too so you can remix those as well if it's from your community so you know you can be like you know if you're the PTA and you can be like hey we're gonna do a cookie cookbook now and then tomorrow next month you're like oh we're gonna do a dinner cookbook now you don't have to try to get those people to re-upload the recipes because that's right. that's a pain <laughs> yeah. every person I've ever talked to who has done like a community cookbook has <laughs> been like we really want to do a community cookbook but we spent hours managing and uploading and downloading and editing and then printing them out and paying for them and then oh, shipping yeah. them. Oh yeah, that would be blah, blah, blah. ridiculous. Yeah, so we, we, we think we solved that problem. Let's see, we have nine tweets. We're going to be ending soon, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, and also, uh, Douglas brings up a good point. It says, my cookbook recipes are also freely available in Bakespace.com bakes, system on our website uh, for those non- iPad users. We are going to do an iPhone app and we are going to go into Android and we're going to you know, make sure that we're covered but we started off the platform in iPad just because it was a nice experience for the users and we thought the iPad users will think it's cool. Um, but anyone with a web browser can access any of the cookbooks. Right. Now what about, like a lot of my recipes are on my blog which is free so for me to do, like if I was going to do one, a cookbook and charge for it, I would feel bad using <laughs> any of these recipes that are available for free in a cookbook and make them pay for it. Well, Any that's on you. Br you bring up a really good point. Well, first of all, it's it's always great to monetize your content. That's always a good thing. I always say, make sure you do that. Um, if you are curating the cookbook, so if you are basically putting the time and pulling, like Shane did a great job. Shane actually pulled like his best recipes that he went through his Google Analytics and looked to find out what what are the most popular recipes on his blog and he put them into one cookbook. So if you're starting to if you're starting to build like, you know, this curated experience where you have the 15 cookie recipes that you want to share or whatever topic it is, 
the the time that you're saving the user to have to then go to your blog and search through all those recipes and find mm -hmm. them and print them and then be able to archive them in a way that's nicely packaged so that when they come back later they search for them um, I see total value in that and I see and they're like paying for the convenience exactly and also the cookbooks you know they range from free and then they start at 99 cents to 9.99. So if you're trying to raise money for a nonprofit, you know, if you're charging 9.99 for a cookbook because it's all going to a good cause and you're putting out the call to all your community members okay. saying download our cookbook, you know, here's something of value in return. Um, I see no problem with that. I mean, most of the time, you know, there are so many recipes on the web that even at recipes in cookbooks are probably on the web somewhere. <laughs> but probably. for that convenience and that experience, and then some some folks like you could even do videos, so you can supplement your content with actually you talking about the recipe or right. cooking the recipe. So there's ways for you to sort of um, mark it up as a premium experience, just not just here's the recipes, right. you know, I'm putting it up, and also how they're indexed. So if someone wants to find that recipe later, um, it's a great way for them to be like, oh, I'm looking for an Eggs Benedict recipe, and then being like, oh, that's right, I have one right here, this is great. So for that convenience, um, I don't think there's any problem with charging for content that may already be on the web, mm -hmm. but it's just not archived in a way that is accessible to just the general public all the time, because you have to, hopefully, those people will go to your blog, and then search in the search box, and then be able to find it, or they've bookmarked it, but then yeah. Have you ever seen your bookmarks? <laughs> They're very <laughs> difficult. I'm like, I try to bookmark stuff and I'm like, oh my god. Where did, I, where did, I, where did I title it or something? Like I, was, <laughs> I, I spent two days looking for a recipe found out that I had actually put it on Pinterest. Well, that oh. was a smart thing to do, but why didn't I remember that? <laughs> See? See? That's exactly the problem. Well, let me check check Twitter to make sure. Um, so, uh, in the hashtag Cookbook Cafe, Douglas put a link to his cookbook, which is uh, Sharing Christmas with Friends, a cookbook that he has available. Tomorrow, he's launching his cookie cookbook as well. Um, so, you want to make sure you check in that. Uh, come and watch us tomorrow for Kitchen Party. We have an amazing. We have. Um, do you know Anna Ginsberg from Cookie Madness? Mm -mm. She's great. She wrote a book. Um, it's like 365 days of cookie recipes. Oh my gosh, nice. And what's cute is that each each recipe has like an extra little like bonus thing where it's like today in history, you know, and it's like <laughs> it's not it's not related to cookies, but they're so unique the little history Quirky. lessons. Yeah, that you're like, I wonder what I'm going to find today, you know. It's really cool. It was really <laughs> smart. Um, I, I could I could see it as an as a um, as a cookbook or an, or some kind of app. I could totally see that. Um, but we're really excited about that tomorrow. Um, this show will be archived on our YouTube channel, which is Bake Space TV. We're going to post it on our Facebook page. If you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter, at Bake Space. And Danielle, where else can we find you? Can you tell us your website, on Facebook? Where can we find you? Uh, Facebook is under um, Peaceful Cooking. And then the blog is peacefulcooking.blogspot.com. And then I've got the Twitter, um, which is I'm Stuffed. And then Pinterest, I'm also on there under I'm Stuffed. And uh, Google Plus under Peaceful Cooking, <laughs> I'm like everywhere. And of course, Big Space, I'm under I'm Stuffed. I think, you know, we have, it's just like you have multiple personalities. It's like, I'm Stuffed, Peaceful Cooking. We're, I think we're going to have to decide. We're going to have to decide. I think it kind of works together. I'm Peaceful Cooking, and then i got to eat it. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got me on that one. <laughs> that was a good that's a good comeback. I, I respect that. I think that's great. Well, thank you so much, Danielle, thank for joining you. us. Thank you, all of our me. audience. Uh, we'll see you either. I think we're going to have another show next week. We're going to try to do this every single Wednesday uh, when we can find our authors to join us. Uh, any questions you have, you can find us at Bakespace.com. If you want to make a cookbook yourself, you go to Bakespace.com and click on Cookbook Cafe. Or just go to cookbookcafe.com and you'll find all your information. Making a cookbook is always free and you can make it into an ebook and an iPad app. And we love that you have joined us. If you have any questions, leave a comment in YouTube below or on Twitter, wherever the. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like oh, wherever there. the blog is. I'm trying to think, where would it be? <laughs> this way. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. See you Bye. later. Bye.